Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Healing Art After Hours. I'm Shauna Robeson with Creating Space Coastal, and in this video, we are going to be exploring a deeper dive into wet embossed techniques using heat embossing, embossing paste, and some other dimensional materials to create some fun effects. So I will be um, giving you kind of a tour of a lot of different options. And then I'm going to be demonstrating how to create the techniques that I use to create these cards. So if you're interested in finding out how, stay tuned. Let's get started. Welcome everybody to Healing Art Happy Hour. Tonight we're going to be going to a deeper dive into wet embossing. So that's the topic of tonight. And I was trying to create some projects to demonstrate um, parts. I'll be demonstrating parts of creating these, but I was thinking about we have a lot of different um, holidays coming up and, you know, American holidays. Happy Thanksgiving to Canadians that are with us, by the way. <laughs> Um, so I, I just was trying to make different themed cards. I'm just going to show you a couple of the projects that I'm going to be showing the techniques through, but you can, of course, apply, use any of your own subjects or themes or holidays or whatever, uh, that you want to use. So I have kind of a Thanksgiving, a little, um, a winter one, and then I have a New Year's and a Halloween. So these are some of the techniques that we were, are going to be talking about tonight. So I just wanted to just have you see them in use in a project, and then I'll talk about how to do them. So stay tuned for those. But first, I'm going to give you a little tour of the things that I have in my little wet embossing technique toolbox. Um, I'll be doing more demonstrations, but I wanted to show you what things look like. So I decided to do a little sample pack on three different colors. I'll hopefully be able to show you some of them, even if some of them, the white's going to be too bright. But so I did clear ink. So that's this Versamark watermark stamp pad. So it's a clear, basically it's like a glycerin and probably some resin mix and it's very sticky. So what it does is it sticks to the paper and then the embossing powder, which just looks like a powder and there's different colors, you sprinkle that on there and it sticks to the paper and then you heat that and it melts on the paper. So it's kind of almost like, I think it's probably like an acrylic resin, like little acrylic resin powder. So it melts onto the project. So the ink is just basically allowing it to stick to the paper long enough for you to, to actually melt it onto the paper. It's not, the, the ink itself isn't what's holding it onto the paper. It is actually melting onto the paper. So I did some samples. I did clear, so this is the clear ink and then clear embossing powder, which looks white in the packaging. And this is one of my favorites because you can use it for a lot of things and I'll, and I'll be showing you some of those options today. It's hard to see it on the white because it's clear. However, uh, once you color the background, like in this project, that's exactly what I did here. I used a clear ink and clear embossing powder on white paper, and then I colored the paper around it and see it creates a a white resist behind it. So it looks really cool once you color it, but it also gives a little shiny, shiny texture. So it kind of looks the same as this, except for it's it's on the, I don't know why I can't even get it to, yeah, I can't even have it show the shininess, but so this is clear on clear on the craft paper and that's a medium value. I will say that using this anti-static pouch, which is essentially some cornstarch in a pouch is what I, what I think it is. Um, and that helps keep the powder from sticking places where you don't want it, but it also can lighten the paper. And I did find that it, once I stamped over that, it actually showed up lighter underneath there. So do you have to be careful with colored paper when you're using that because it does have a, a little bit of a, a white pigment to it. And I, I think I, I tried to clean it off the outside, but it, if it gets stuck underneath the, the actual embossing powder, it's still going to show up lighter. So just be aware of that. And 
um, not overdo it on the powder on colored cardstock. So clear and clear and then clear on the black. So that's a really nice kind of a watermark look on the black as well. Then I did, I, I had two different um, clears and I don't think that they're really that different, but you can see the difference between these two because of that embossing powder. See how that's kind of faded out. And this one, I didn't use the embossing powder. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the anti-static pouch on. And so I didn't have the problem with that powder, that cornstarch sticking to my paper. And so it gives me a nice tone on tone look on the craft paper. The next one that I did was clear ink. And then I used a pearl color. And it also looks white or clear, but then when you put it on different paper, it shows a little bit different. Like it looks almost a little bluer on here um, and has almost a golden look on here. It kind of has an iridescence on here. It looks beautiful in person, but I think it's hard to pick up the white on white in the camera, unfortunately. But it has a nice shine to it, but it actually has the pearl color and it pops a lot more than the white, the clear on white. The next one that I did is this pearl, but I used a black ink underneath. So this time I stink, I, I did the stamping with a, I just probably used this archival ink and it's black. And then I put the pearl over the top and now it even has a different look. It's almost has a blue shimmer to it or like a almost a pewter, this one especially. So you can always add a color, especially if it has any translucence at all, it'll give it a different effect. Now I have another one that's called uh, Interference Blue and it's a larger size crystal. So it comes like this, this is um, ultra thick. So it, it comes out a little bit chunkier. And so you get a little bit bigger, you know, bigger grains. So it can give a little bit more texture and it does have sort of a blue look on the black. And again, on the white, it's really just, this camera's just not getting my, <laughs> not picking it up very well. So I'm glad I did it on three different ones. But again, you can you do the same effect that I did with the other one where I just do the color around it and then it's not gonna be pure white. It, it might have the, either the pearl or the, the blue interference look to it. You can also do it over colored pigment and it's going to look different as well. The next one I did is the clear ink and then the white powder. And the one challenge to use the white powder on, for example, the black cardstock is that if you get any of the little powder specks, see how there's like the little white powder specks around it? Because the, it's a powder, it does tend to stick in different places. Um, and that's what the anti-static pouch is about. But sometimes there's still just little stray granules. And so using the white on a dark, is, you know, you're going to run into that. So just what you can do, and I'll be demonstrating this, but what you can do is when it's still wet before you've heat set it, you can use a brush to brush off any of those excess granules to try to reduce that. But that is one of the challenges you'll find with some of the, you know, like the white or even the black on the white. Um, I prefer to use a black ink and then stamp clear on a white because of that, because the black shows up, of course, even more on there. And as far as how the white on white looks, um, it looks pretty close um, to the clear, but it's actually does show a little brighter. Oh, there you can see the shine. It does show up a little brighter and more, you, you know, it does stand out a little bit more. It's hard to see, but, um, so I think the white on white does actually look really nice. Um, and then the white on here again, I could see a little couple granules of that, but it's not too bad. It's mostly, it shows up on the, on the really dark. Stop. Okay, then I use Stampin' Up White, which is a pigment ink. I do recommend if you're going to use 
inks that aren't the watermark ink that you do use the pigment inks because they are made of the same base as this so they're glycerin based they're kind of sticky they stay wet for a long time because like i said you really need it to stick to the page so it needs to stay wet long enough for the powder to, to stay because when you use the heat tool it will blow the it can blow the powder off so if the powder's not stuck there um you know securely long enough to let it melt it's it might blow away so the pigment ink works really well for that because it's sticky and it does stay wet longer and um i used the white on white with clear and again you guys aren't going to see too much of that on that camera unfortunately i did not like it on the car the craft i think part of that was because i didn't get full coverage so maybe if i would have done a second or third stamp where i got nice full coverage that would have turned out a little bit better but you can see where some of the areas where i didn't have the white pigment coverage the clear sunk in and it just darkened it so it made it not look great um on the oh also on the black it's just not as vibrant as the white so if you want it to be a little more subdued that's a great option to do the white ink and then the clear and then you don't have to worry about all these little granules but you're not going to get necessarily as bright of a of a white and maybe another ink a different um, pigment ink might turn out to be brighter so maybe that's the issue uh you could try that as well okay the next one I just ha have in my toolbox is, so this one I used the clear ink and then I used red embossing powder on the top of it. And it's almost looks like a little bit like a red, red metallic look. So you can see how that looks on each of those. And I also have a dark green, which turns out looking actually black or really dark you can't even see it on the black <laughs> but I just wanted to show you on each of these since I was doing it um so you can it, and it's pretty dark even here but they have various colors I would say if you're gonna limit what you have getting the clear is the first one I would I would suggest because you can always like I said use the other inks underneath and then maybe the metallics and black and white but i i would use just ink for colors and i'll show you an example of what that looks like so this is with clear ink and then i used the black embossing powder and for the black it really looks very similar to the clear i don't see um you can see again i had some of that anti-static powder that that kind of stuck to my paper and it does depend on how smooth the paper is sometimes the paper if it's a little porous it's going to hold that powder a little better so just be careful and not overdo it with the anti-static I um black on black I'm not going to worry about seeing it as much so I think not using the static bag would probably be a good option for that one and then this is using the black on here I I was able to get most of the any stray powder off so I don't see a lot of problems with that but it can be a problem. You just have to be aware of it. And then the metallics. I really do love the metallics and those really show up different than, you know, using markers or other kind of metallics. They really pop. So clear and metallics are probably my favorites. And there's a lot of effects that you can get with those. Like for example, I use that metallic here, which really pops and also doing kind of the, the gilded effect that's using the metallics along the edge of that so you can have a lot of fun with the metallics that's the silver and then the gold okay so those are the those are the basically my collection of the powders and what they look like on a basic project I also have some other fun dimensional pipe liquids. So I, I did some demos of those as well. This one is using a colored ink, and then I just use the clear over the top of it. 
So if I can get that to show the light, I want it to. I want to show that it's very glossy. Let's get my. See how glossy that is. So you could use any color if you're if you're it's on white cardstock. You can pretty much use any color ink and then the clear on top. This is using distress ink. So distress ink tends to give a little bit of a, a mottled look, but you could use the um, pigment ink. Now, the thing about this, what I did was I stamped it first with the color and I used my Misty for positioning because you want to restamp it the same exact location. So I used this stamp positioner so I could stamp it exactly where I stamped it before. And that's really helpful because what I did was I stamped it once with the blue and then I stamped it over the top because that water was not pigment ink. I mean, I'm sorry, the, the ink was not pigment ink. Now, if you have pigment ink, it's com a completely different, um, you have different options, but I didn't have this color in a pigment ink, but I wanted this color. So I used a dye, a water-based dye ink, which dries very quickly. So it's not gonna stick to the, um, I, it, the distress inks do last a little bit longer, but they just don't stick like the pigment inks do. You'll, it just won't be as good a coverage. So I went ahead and stamped over the top of that with clear pigment, or I mean a clear, yeah, clear, basically clear pigment ink, the Versamark watermark. And then I did my heat embossing on the clear. So that way I got a nice coverage and um, I don't think I would have done, gotten that with just the distress ink. But um, but if you have a that color in pigment ink, then you don't have to do that extra step. I also tried mixing some of the colors together. So this was a mix of pearl, black, and the metallics, the gold and silver. So you can play around with mixing some of them. I would the I try to save whatever I don't use because you do you do waste a lot. You know, you pour a lot out when you're using it. And you'll when I do the demonstration, you'll understand what I'm saying. Um, so what I did for this particular thing is I just had a little extra bottle and I just used that so I could keep them separate because I didn't want to pour that back into my original bottles. This is, you know, so I just pour it back into the original bottle once I'm done using it on my project but you can get cross contamination on how you do it. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit later, but um, so I just made a completely separate powder. The other thing I have is this embossed gel and, or it's called embossing paste. And it basically looks just like, and I think is an acrylic gel paste. And I talked about this when I was doing acrylics, um, the, the different thicknesses of the, the acrylic mediums. And, I, and it does say it's 100% acrylic emulsion. So I don't know if this has a special formula, but it basically, I did do a side-by-side -side demonstration with some of the other things that I have in, you know, in my, my stash. So I just wanted to show you guys how those look comparatively in case you don't have that, but maybe you have some acrylic gel medium. So this is the embossed gel and I just did it through a stencil and it comes out shiny and clear. And, and you can get this in different colors. And also I think there's a white one. This one is translucent, but you can get them in shimmer, but you can also create your own shimmer just by adding things to it. And I will be showing you that in a little bit as well. So this is that embossing gel through a stencil. And then I did a gloss acrylic medium gel and it looks basically the same. I don't see any difference there. And then I also tried out my flexible modeling paste that I have in my acrylic stash. And it's a little grayish in color, but I think if you were going to maybe stamp, um, color over it, like put some ink over it, it would be fine. It's It feels like um, it's almost like a, gesso. So it looks like it, it feels like it would accept color or any kind of pigment, but by itself, it's a little bit drab. It almost looks a little like Bondo. And then I also used my super heavy gesso and that's real bright white. And also you could either leave it the bright white or you could color it. So those would all work, I think, just fine. 
I also did some of this crackle. I wanted to see how that would look. Um, and it does start to fall off and it, and it even tells you, you need to put something over it, um, as a kind of to secure it after it dries, because I started moving this paper because it's real flexible and I started popping off some of the crackles. So I did put a, uh, some Mod Podge over the top just to keep it from peeling off any further, but they do make an actual crackle paste and things like that. That's designed for paper. This one is more art base so maybe it'll work better on a canvas or things like that than paper because it definitely um you know warped my paper but i just wanted to, to give you an idea you can use some things that you might already have in your stash that you use for other stuff i think if i put a thinner layer on there it might have you know dried a little quicker or a thicker cardstock this is pretty thin so but it does look really cool it has a really cool effect and I think it took up some of the pigment from the paper. So that's where that red comes from, or that sort of pinkish look. That's interesting. Another interesting, oh, I'm gonna show that in a minute. Okay, back to these gels. I did try mixing the embossing paste with some Pearlex, which is like a shimmer powder. You can buy, there's different names for them. Uh, but but it basically is just a mica powder and that came out really nice I mix it in with the paste you can also put it on like if I were to run this through the stencil and then while it's wet you could sprinkle it on top but I actually mix it into it and I think that it's less likely to come off you know if you do it that way but probably both effects will work and then I also tried it with some eyeshadow, which is essentially mica powder as well. It's a little yellower and it has, I can see that there are bigger, bigger um, flakes in there. It's more sparkly. This looks more metallic and this looks a little bit more glittery, but that works too. So if you have some old eyeshadow that you don't use, this is from a dollar store. And I just sprinkled it and mixed it in with the paste and it worked pretty well. So if that's all you have, give it a go. And I also did an effect where I took the embossing paste um, and I tried all of them. I did emboss paste, the gloss gel and um, modeling paste and the gesso. And what I did is I, I did the same thing I did over here. I put them through the stencil and then I added some metallic heat embossing over the top while it was wet. I let them dry completely for several hours to make sure that they were dry. And then I heat set it. So I melted the metal on top and what that gives you, and they, they all turned out pretty similar. Um, the embossing paste is a little smoother. Let me just see if I can show you how these textures are but what it gives you is a is a little bit thicker three dimension than what you're going to get by just um doing the heat embossing alone or um just doing the paste alone and it gives you that metallic look so uh so this is the embossing paste this is the gloss gel medium they look pretty much the same and the modeling paste is very um, more modeled looking. It's a bit more textured. And part of that is that when you do the heat embossing part, you are putting a high heat on it. So depending on what the makeup of is of this gel, it, it may not withstand the heat as well. So it might bubble. So this one I think did a little bit more bubbling. Maybe there's a there might be some rubber content in there to make it flexible modeling, modeling paste. I'm not sure. And then this one's the heavy gesso, and that was a little bit more textured as well. See how it has a little bit more modeling in it, but that looks really cool too. Now you do have to be careful because I don't really know when I'm heating this, I don't, I'm assuming because it's designed to be heated that this is safe to heat as far as you know wearing a mask or something but you know these are just i'm trying some things out so i can't say that heating up gesso to the point of boiling is safe so i don't want to 
<laughs> you may want to do some more research on that, but I do, just try not to have my face right over it and be well in a well ventilated area. But you know, you are heating something up and there are fumes. So it, you know, not all of it may be safe to do that with. So um, you could also wear a respirator mask. I, I have one of those, but I don't, I don't put it on as much as I probably should <laughs> when I'm experimenting. All right. Um, this one is a, let's see, this one, I can't even read mine. Oh, I just mixed some of the Perlex with some embossing powder and it doesn't give me as great of an emboss because it's of course somewhat diluted with the powder but if you don't have gold for example you just have clear and you have some of this maybe you have some mica powder you could just mix them and you can still get a pretty cool effect with that so so mix up what you have and you'll find that you know you might have more options than you know that you have in your in your stash this one is a it, it was a, a little die cut and we're going to be doing that in, um, in the next coming in a couple weeks we're going to be focusing on dies but I wanted to show you how you could take a little element and I stamped this with a blue ink and this was a this was a um the pigment ink so it worked really well to hold the clear embossing paste on and it I put a couple layers of the embossing paste so you you can create your own elements. I could even add some more layers to that to make it thicker, but it just creates a more durable, you know, thicker and more durable and shiny little element that you can add to your pieces. And then you could just make it from paper. And but it looks like it's plastic. So you can create your own your own embellishment um, elements. Now you can also just keep re uh, layering and layering the heat embossing powder you can do it a couple ways you can either heat this while it's still hot you can add a little bit more of the powder and it'll be tacky and so the powder will stick but you got to do it right away because if it starts to cool it and it cools fairly quickly it will um, harden and so it, the powder won't stick so while it's still wet and gummy you can pour more powder over and then heat it again and you could do this a few layers and then you get this three-dimensional this thick layers of this embossing powder and then you can take a, a stamp just a rubber stamp and stamp into it and get like almost one of those wax seal effects and i didn't do it too thick but you can even make it thicker than that and i did this right on the paper and you can either put ink on the stamp or no ink on the stamp, but you still get the texture of that stamp. And I just used a regular rubber stamp. I think rubber stamps as opposed to the clear stamps work a little bit better just because maybe they can handle the heat better. But I don't know that for sure, but I just feel safer using them just because they're a little bit more durable material. And I'm not sure about the other ones. Uh, and I tried a couple other effects just doing the embossing on the on my heat mat so I just and I actually have this dauber here that is also like a clear embossing ink so it's the same thing that I have in this but it's in a little dauber so I can I can uh, put it in on different types of projects so I just did it right on my mat and then I put the powder on and then I heat it and I did that a few times and it created this pool of molten you know what looks like molten metal and and then i stamped into it and i did it i did it a couple different times just tried different things this wasn't a very thick layer this one was thicker and i think i put ink i put ink into this one and then i just scraped them off my mat and i actually glued them onto here so the, this was a completely separate element see how it's it's kind of separate it you know it's kind of a you could just do it right on the paper if it's going on paper but if you want you could make it a separate thing if you're trying to make a charm or do something like that so um you can play around with that as well another fun i promise i'm getting close to the end of my stash <laughs> um, but i do have a lot of i realize i have a lot of dimensional things in my stash let's see um i did that one already okay so this one a liquid applique and I wasn't sure if this was still working but it did and basically what that does is creates this it look, 
for for this project i made it look like the let's see if i can it makes it makes this three-dimensional foam basically um so you put it on the project and then you let it dry you're supposed to let it dry i think historically i used to do it while it was still wet and it worked but um, I did do it dry this time, but you basically put it on your project and then you let it dry and then you heat it and it puffs up like almost like popcorn. See how three dimensional that is. And it's kind of this white color. So I've used it for doing um, like um, frosting or or this in this case, I did it for some whipped cream or you could do it for popcorn or some fun three dimensional. It kind of has this sort of popcorn texture. I would say. And I've even added embedded like little beads and stuff in it to make it look like sprinkles. So we'll we'll play around with that. And I also have these little dimensional accent gels and in different some different colors. So there's some clear ones that are meant to look wet. So these look like little drops of water and they stay like that. These are completely dry. This one was designed to spray on, but the sprayer stopped working. But you can see it lies a little bit flatter. But any clear, any clear adhesive that has some body to it and it doesn't, you know, flatten out real easily um, and it's real cl crystal clear, you could use for these types of effects. So if you have some glue in your in your stash that does that. Um, and then this one actually has the little shimmery glitter in there as well. And this is part of the, the glitter effects so i have these little um i think these are the stickles yeah these are the stickles and different colors so that's glitter basically glitter glue and then i also have these are ink essentials enamel accents and they they're three-dimensional and they look like little pearls so if you like to put pearl accents on your projects like i use these to make these little Pearl accents there, and I also used them on this. You can make them any size you want. So those are fun, and I have them in some different colors as well. I have these colors. They're um, they're different brands. These are Ranger Liquid Pearls, but they all have a three dimensional look to them, and they're just nice for creating a little bit of accent on your project. And then this. The other thing that I have, I'm almost, I'm almost through it all, <laughs> is this glue pad. And it comes with the, the glue bottles on the side, and then you can put the glue on. It's just like any other stamp pad, except for it's glue. And so you can use it with your glitters. And so you can stamp any, you know, any of your stamps, and then you just sprinkle your glitter on. Now, I don't like glitter getting everywhere. <laughs> so um, I like to put some kind of fixative over the top. You can either put some kind of art fixative or you can just, um, you know, use some hairspray, some aerosol hairspray, and just try to fix that glitter down because otherwise you send it to your friends and they don't like it either all over their house. <laughs> But it's a but this is a nice way to do that. If you have something that you want to glue down you, in the pattern, you can use this glue pad to get exactly what you want where you want it. So that's kind of handy. All right. So those are most of my. I think I've covered all of my little um, supply stash. And then I did want to show you these examples. This is mixing. And it kind of messed up, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you a cautionary tale. <laughs> but I was using some of the embossing paste, so this, and I mixed it with shimmer. And I, in this case, I actually mixed it with the eyeshadow. And I mean, look at that cool effect. That's really, that's really nice. It's because I don't have a copper color in my embossing powders, so this is kind of coppery looking. I don't know if you can see that in the, the picture, but that really works nice. I definitely think that's a great option. And I also tried it with some of the eyeshadow up here. Or no, up here. 
you can see it's a little bit looks a little different and then down here I actually use that pearl x so you can see the difference it still looks really cool now this stencil cautionary tale when you're trying to do the any kind of these gels through a stencil this stencil is very very loose and very soft and doesn't have a lot of structure so trying to get that paste on there is tricky so if you're going to do it I think I could do it but you want to really tape it down first of all and I would even try to tape the edges and then go with the grain of these lines like try not to try to don't put the paste this way you know don't try to smooth it on there that way and use a bigger spreader tool because I was trying to do it with my little palette knife and it just wasn't working so I think if you're going to do something like this tape it secure it down real good you can still do it I still believe it's possible and then I would run it with the grain of the design with something larger a larger spreader and I think you're going to have better results than what I got here and then do wash the stencils right away if you're using anything anything acrylic and this is definitely an acrylic it's not gonna it's gonna dry permanent so make sure that you wash your stencils right away it's not like white glue that you can leave and then it'll dissolve again in water it it may be a lot harder to clean if you let it sit and one other technique that I did want to share and I haven't used this yet but I I want to is I just did some stamps that have some open space in them and did embossing I did a black embossing and a gold embossing but I stamped them on a glossy like it was an old um calendar that had some pumpkins so I actually stamped it on pumpkins so I could have the pumpkin texture behind it and I thought that was kind of fun uh like I said I haven't used them yet but that's just a little idea you can um try out I'm, I'm gonna think about ways to use those but I haven't got to them yet okay now I want to demonstrate some of these things <laughs> sorry for all the talking but I wanted to show you so many things and I'm not going to have time to demonstrate all of those so I but I want to at least have you be aware of how many different things you can do with this medium and I also have this Versamark this is the same ink this clear ink or basically some glycerin maybe glycerin resin mix in a marker so I can always either fill in an area or I could even write words or things like that that I if I want them to be embossed and it has a brush tip too although the brush tip is really too soft to be to do anything I, I've tried to use it and it just it moves away from my project I don't know if this is something's wrong with this one or if they're all like that but um, I like this nib much better this is the Versa marker watermark pen okay so the, for the first technique that I'm going to show you, I'm going to demonstrate with these this background here. I'm not going to put the whole card together. I'm just going to do the parts, and then I'll explain because otherwise we won't, we'll run out of time. Basically, what I did for this card is I'm using the Misty tool, and this is for those of you who are new. This is just helps guide um, my stamps that I, way I can re re-ink if and re-stamp if I want to it just is a tool that helps with with stamping I'm just deciding where I want my collection of snowflakes to land I'm not going to reposition them I did it a little different last time so If you look to the side you can kind of see where the um the marks are so i'm just trying to see where there are i want to add a couple more i will just do it by hand all right now i'm taking the clear embossing powder i do recommend if you use these a lot 
to have a container for each of your primary colors because then you'll reduce the cross contamination. I use this one container for all of my different colors, but I got to clean it out really well or else I can cross contaminate and you'll see why in a second. Uh, and that does happen. So I do my best, but uh, I used to have enough space that I just had one that was for clear, one for white, one for black, and then I did my metallic separate. But um, it, it is helpful to just have one at like one of these containers for each of your main colors that you use. And you just pour the powder out. That's why you're going to want to reuse it. You just get the powder all over your project. And I didn't use my static thing. I always forget to use that. <laughs> tap it off. If you tap it off, it's less likely you're going to get um, as much powder on your workspace because sometimes the powder will fly around and get on your workspace and it's kind of annoying. So um, the more you get off, the less it'll blow. Now this is the heat tool and mine has been having problems. So I've had to order another one. Hopefully it'll stay working tonight, but sometimes it gets to a, a hot point and then it doesn't want to turn on again until it cools off. So um, I don't know if I'm alone with that, but I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. It's going to make some noise. I apologize. I do heat it up before I bring it to the project just to reduce the amount of powder that gets blown off it because I think it'll start, you know, melting as it as it approaches it and it works a little better. It's hard to see on the white on white in this with this camera, but as it starts to melt, it gets shiny. So that's how you can tell that it's ready. And what I do is I usually start with one corner. I try to not hold it steady too long when it's real hot because you don't want to scorch your project. But um, once I start to see it turn glossy, I start moving it and I kind of chase the, the gloss across my paper until it's all glossy. And if you look at it and there's anything that looks grainy or not glossy, um, it looks powdery, then you can just you know reheat it. I can tell that some of the areas didn't get um, but it's going to be behind a project, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. All right, now you can't see anything yet, but you will. <laughs> you will momentarily. So I'm going to use Distress Inks just because they work really well for blending. And I'm using my brush, my uh, blending paddle. Let me bring this closer so you guys can see the magic. Well, as I start doing the blending over the project, then you can start to see the pattern appear. And now I have that background, basically designer paper with my snowflakes on it. Hello everyone, just a reminder to please click on that subscribe button or the like button if you're finding this content helpful and comment below and also check out the links below for product. Let's get back to it. Now for this one, it's very easy because it's pretty much just a stamp and I can do it on I'm going to do it on white paper this time. All right, this time I'm going to go ahead and use my anti-static pouch since it's white. Anything. And this is what the stamp looks like. So it has a lot of areas that it's going to be able to hold that fun metallic color. And again, I'm going to use the clear ink. And I want to make sure I get really good coverage. One challenge is because it's clear, you know, you can't really see it very well, but you can kind of look and see if it looks wet. So just make sure it's, you know, nice and juicy all over because you really get, you know, um, if you don't have a stamp and positioning tool, you get one shot. If you have a stamping positioning tool, you can make it to be able to stamp it a second time, but 
All right, and then I'm just going to stamp it on there. It's a big stamp, so I'm just making sure to press all the areas so that I get nice good coverage because I don't want to miss anything. All right, and now I'm going to take my metallic. Now I have a second one of these trays. Otherwise, I'd have to clean up the first one before I could use it. So that's the other downside of having only a couple trays to use. <laughs> but I have two to work with. And I'll show you how to how I clean up. I think that's helpful too. All right, now I'm just going to pour the powder all over the design. And you can just kind of move it around. Look it. And looks like I got pretty good coverage there. If I do see any strays, I, I, can, I see a little stray right there. You can just knock it off. It comes off pretty easy before you heat it. You can clean those strays up with a sand eraser or something like that. But all right, heating up my tool. This one, this one you will be able to see as it changes. So you'll be able to see the magic. See how it's changing color? Tell. Now you'll notice that I heat the back of it too. It does do a little bit of warping of the paper because of the heat. So I like to heat the back of the paper to try to kind of reset that, that warping. But um, even with warping, I'm going to glue it down anyway, so it doesn't really matter. It's not too bad there, but look at, isn't that beautiful? See how shiny and metallic that is. So um, in this case, for this project, I used my, I have a rotary cutter that has this special design on it, but you could even use some of your, you know, if you have these old things that have been around for ages, or maybe your kids or grandkids might have them in their stash, you could just trim around it there if you wanted to do something that's like this. So I'm not going to do the two matting. I'll just do the white. So I'm just going to turn around it with this just to give you an idea. And you can kind of use the previous cut. If you just put the, if you have these, you just put them in the groove of the previous cut and then take the second cut and you can get a pretty straight line. I use a lot more my die cuts to do this, but I'm since I'm demonstrating those in the future, I thought I'm going to just show you some alternatives. See, it kind of has a postage stamp look. I think that's actually kind of fun. So now I have my little postage stamp. I can either mat it with something else behind it, but I think that kind of looks cool. It almost gives itself a matting. And I just used, I wanted to let it snow to be very subtle. So I just used some of that same ink that I used for the background, the darkest color. Oh, and I went off the edge a little bit, but. And then I just glue it all together. So I can have it directly on there, or I could put another, I could have another matting behind that. I wanted tried to use as many of the techniques as I could in these. I was like, okay, let's try to get them all in there. So this one's fun. I don't know if you can see this is this leaf has a lot of it's completely glossy. It has this gilded edges, a lot of fun. And then these leaves have a little bit of some um, shimmer as well. So can you see that? So I've added a lot of fun embellishments to this one. And how I made that starts with creating some 
designer paper. So I just use these little stamps. Let me back this up a little bit. Just use these little stamps. Now, these are those ones that are made of silicone that are not highly durable. So they literally started to disintegrate as I was using them. I, I tore the stem off of one of them, but they're still working. Um, I just have to be really, really delicate with them. And I think before I actually get to that, I do want to show you how I clean up my powder because I'm going to have to do that. But let's, well, let me just show you my process and why I have all this parts to this. So I have a folded piece of cardstock and all of that white is actually from using that anti-static powder to try to help keep the powder from sticking to this paper. So periodically I'll resurface it with it. But basically this is this can catch some of the powder and this is the catches some of the powder. But then I use this paper to funnel it back into my little container. And it always gets stuck in this little crevice here. So I have a little paintbrush that I use to try to brush it down in. And as I do that, of course, then I get some of it in here. So I can either, you know, depending on how much time I want to spend, I can keep trying to get more and more of that in the bottle, or I just take it to the trash. And it does last a long time. You know, a little goes a long way. So you don't have to be miserly about, about it, but um, but I like to try to save as much as possible. And that's why I think it's nice to have a, a designated container that way I don't have to, you know, it just stays in there and everything runs back into that. And then you don't have to worry about losing really much at all. And it's also a good idea to put the caps on your powders because I knock them over a lot too. <laughs> so <laughs> to keep them from, yeah, they're, not, they're hard to clean up. So I recommend trying to keep those caps on them. Okay. I am going to be using that soon, but not right this second. For this, I did a similar thing that I did with those snowflakes, but you can just use a regular stamp too. It's just that I'm, since I'm stamping several things together, it's just easy enough to do it this way. So what I do is I take these little guys and I just put them wherever I want them on my project. Okay, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need the uh, foam insert. This is just some foam that comes with this tool that makes this a little bit thicker. And since these are the thin stamps, they don't, doesn't reach real well without it underneath. So that's why I'm putting that in. Because with those thicker stamps I was using before, that is fine without the foam, but with this one I do need the foam. And I'm just thinking about these going different orientations. Some are up, going somewhere upright, some are upside down. I'm trying not to tear these as I remove it from the... I'm going to bring this up a little bit because... I'm using this graph paper to guide where I am. So I'm I'm up like two and a quarter and then a little bit over two from the side in case I need to redo it. But I want these to go off the edge, some of them. So I want room, I need room off the edge. But I wanna remember where this was in case I have to reposition it to stamp again a second time. So that's why it's nice. I just cut this graph paper down to fit in this tool. They actually sell, I think they sell little sheets for it, but. I'm gonna use that area for my mag. This is a magnet that holds it down. All right, so when I close this door, all of those stamps are gonna stick to top of the top of the door and those are going to stick to the paper because they're real gummy 
And that's why I need to know also where that paper is supposed to go <laughs> because they they really like to stick. Now I'm taking a couple some colors that I like that go together. I'm using Stampin' Up. This is dye, water-based dye ink. This is crushed curry, Cajun craze, and I'm going to use a little bit of Holy Espresso. And I think I'm going to use a little bit of this, um, maybe this vintage photo and walnut stain. I might have those as well. So we'll see. But I just want to get a mix of colors that are fall. And so what I'm doing is starting with the yellow because it's the lightest color. Because I'm going to kind of do an ombre effect where I want multiple colors on the same stamp. See how there's yellow and the crushed curry. So I'm just going to kind of dab in the yellow in places and then go in with a darker color. That's why I'm starting with the lightest color because if I add a little yellow to this, it's not going to be a big deal. But if I put this in the yellow, it, it will be not as good of a deal. And I do have markers of these colors. So if I had to add anything, I could either restamp them or I could use markers. And then I want to add something down, some things down over here. And for that, I can just use, I'll just use my hand because I can just do the details just for a couple stamps. I'm doing kind of a second, second stamp over that just because I didn't realize it was open. Oh, these two open stamps, meaning they're more outline. So I just think I didn't realize I put those two together. So now I have kind of some designer background paper. And I'm just selectively putting some of the darker color around the edges you can also use a dauber you know if you want to put pigment exactly in an area so you can always fill it in and i'm going to use that foam just to help get a nice stamp underneath this um let me make sure you know what? I'm going to use a dauber just because I see I see some dry areas. Now I can go in and if I don't like the coloring, I can fill in wherever I want. Maybe I want a little bit darker around the edges. I can just do some color blending. I want to fill in a little bit of the veins. I want some of those veins white, but I don't want them necessarily, you know, so white. And once you like your color, then this is where, if we were using the die cut machine, which I'll be showing the last week of the month, would come in handy if I had this die cut the shortcut, but I do not have that. So this is what you can do if you don't have that. These are my fussy cut scissors. They're spring activated. So they make it pretty easy to cut out shapes. shapes. Now what you do wanna do if you're, if you're new to fussy cutting, you really wanna move the paper and keep the, the, the blades kind of still and moving. So just move the paper where you want it rather than trying to move the scissors around. Hopefully that makes sense. And I'm leaving a little bit of a, a white border around it because I want to get the whole shape, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to be covering that border with the gold. 
but there's other things you can do too and i'll show you some different options if you if even if you weren't going to emboss the edge of that but i want to make it look as organic i want to try to follow the contour as best i can just to give it kind of an organic look so i'm sort of wiggling it around to get you know follow the and this stem is a little kind of thin for my taste so i'm especially leaving a lot of extra space here because again i'm going to make that i'm going to i'll resolve the fact that it's a lot of white there so it's not going to matter okay and this is where i bring in and you can do it of course with the dark whatever darkest color you're using but i'm going to use this espresso or you could use your distress inks a dark color and again i'm going to be put gilding the edge but i still want this kind of dark color around that edge so all i'm doing is using my finger dabber and then kind of cleaning up that edge so you can see it's just gonna get rid of that white and make it kind of look like it's part of the and you could use the color that's already in there if you want but um or you can use black sometimes i'll use black if that goes nice with whatever project okay, how that looks now you can even crinkle it all up if you want sometimes that's a fun fun look um to kind of make it a little more distressed. Maybe I'll do that. Now let's do, let's polish it up a little bit and give it some gilding. So the first thing I'm gonna do, and maybe, yeah, I think it's making it kind of wrinkly. It's probably good before I do this step. The first thing I'm gonna do is take my clear embossed ink. And actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this dauber because this is water-based eye ink. It's not fixed, so it is still water-soluble. And I don't really want to put color on my pad here. And this I can clean up a little bit easier. So I'm going to use this dauber. And I'm just going to wet the whole thing. I have clear, yeah. Clear embossing ready to go. I just want to make sure it's nice and wet. You can kind of see, if you look at it sideways, see how wet that is. And this is, I'm pretty sure this is the clear one. And I'm just going to get that embossing powder all over that. And I'm trying not to touch as much as possible the face of it because I don't want to. Um, knock that powder off as much as I can help it. So I'm trying to kind of hold it from the side. Now I use this handy dandy pick tool. This one, let's see, is Tim Holtz Ionic Studios. I think it's like a art pick. I'm not sure what it, what they call it, but it's a retracting sharp it, it can make holes so maybe it's a paper punch or but um but it's got a nice sharp tip and what i you do is i use that because this is hot and now it's small and so i don't have a lot of space to stick my fingers in there and i don't want to touch all that powder so this is just a way that i can hold it still and it doesn't mess up too much of it and and keeps it from blowing away Isn't that magic? <laughs> and now we have a nice shiny leaf. And look at, see, because I crinkled it up, it's got kind of, it's got that texture. So it's really almost feels like a, you took a relief and varnished it. Okay. 
Now we're going to do the part where we add the gold, the gilding on the edges. And all we do for that is, and you can use, you can use this or the, the dauber, but basically you just want to try to get some of that on the edge. I think this one's a little gummier, just the brand wise. So that's why I'm trying to use it, but the dauber might be a little bit easier. I was trying to use that marker, but the marker that brush just wasn't stiff enough and it didn't put enough um didn't put enough down for my taste so I'm hoping I got it all along the edges it doesn't have to be everywhere but as much as possible okay now I have to get my the one that I cleaned because that was silver and now I'm using gold take my gold Impossing powder. Pour it all over. And it's supposed to stick where it is wet. So hopefully just those edges. However, even if it's more than you want, there's a remedy. I'm going to try to hold it more towards the center to try not to touch that gold. So I don't really want gold all the way that far in there, but that's that's not a problem. I'm trying to tap off some excess because I can just remove it. Even if there's the ink there, I can still just get rid of the powder and make sure it's only where I want it to be. So if I don't like how far it went in, All right, so now I have the gold where I want it. And again, I'm gonna hold this with my little craft pick. And voila. Now I have my, my gilded gold leaf. And for the rest of the card, I used some raffia, which I wrapped around just this first layer here. And I tied a little piece around the bundle. So I just wrapped it around three times. I tied a separate piece around the bundle to make it look like a bow. And I, you know, I don't, probably don't want to spend the time to see that. <laughs> but, um, and then I just put my leaf in there and then I took the sentiment, I stamped it with now i think i actually embossed this sentiment and this one i did not but i would probably emboss it again but then i just tore around the edge to have that open edge i like the rough edge now you can um you can ink the edges if you if you prefer like I thought about doing that. I did not do it this time, but let me just show you that effect. I like to do several cards that are similar, but then do little variations. So this is an example, like this would be a variation that I might do so that everybody has a unique card. So I just like to add a little bit of either um, Distress Ink. In this case, this is that Espresso. And then for the final embellishments, I did these little liquid pearls, the black. And I just think that those are so fun. So on this page, I'm gonna have my raffia here. So in my leaf there so I can just add a few and it's just so easy you just squeeze a little bit sometimes I'll squeeze it get it started not over my project because sometimes it 
something goes awry, but you just squeeze. Now make sure if you're using something like this, sometimes it'll have a little string. This one's a little bit stringy. And so what happened, let's see, it happened to me in one of these. Oh yeah. In this one, the string kind of laid over to the side and I had to make a bigger dot. So if you do find that it's a little bit stringy, just make sure you go straight up off your project until the string breaks and then it'll go straight back down. And that way you don't end up. Um, I'll show you, I'll show you what that looks like. So you know what I'm talking about. So if I put the dot down and it has a string and I kind of, well, this one made a little bit of a mess, but it wasn't as, <laughs> wasn't as big as the one I did. So if the string, well, if the string sticks, it'll make a little bit of a tail like that one. So you don't want that. Um, sometimes it'll pop it back, the string back in to the center. Like when I was trying to show you, it did that. It kept putting it back. It kind of pulled the string back into the center. But of course, on the project I was working on, it didn't do that. So, all right. So that is all of the pieces to making that. I just put it on a black matting and then a craft card base. Oh, and you know what else I added to this one? I forgot to mention is the we go, of these guys so this is just a basically a glitter glue but they're clear and i just put them right over those leaves to give them a little bling as well so you could do that or not do that but it's it doesn't show up a lot but when you look at it to the side you can see so i just kind of dab a little bit on there doesn't even have to be in any particular pattern. It's just shows up mainly when you look from the side. So it's just a little bit of some fun, fun bling. Make it more interesting. Well, one idea I just wanted to share, and I'll just tell you how I did it. But I think it's fun to, if you're using things that are supposed to be glass, like you could do a fishbowl or you could do wine glasses or, you know, beer mugs, whatever you want to do. And this one, I think I, is when I used that marker to fill in. So what I did is it's just an outline stamp. There's no stamp on the inside. But to make this look like glass, I just filled the inside of it with the clear ink and then did the clear emboss over it just to give it a glass effect. So that's a fun um, a fun effect you can do with anything that's supposed to be glass or, or just things that are supposed to be shiny. And then I did some clear emboss also on, this is just a scrap of paper that was left over from trimming something down. And then I also did that gold leafing along the edge here too. So I just put a little bit, I dipped the edges into the Versamark ink and then dipped it in the powder and then heated it. And that gave a nice little um, sort of rugged gilded edge to that one. Let me show you this effect because this is a little bit trickier. And I want to show you because I think it's a really cool effect. So I'm just going to do it with a small project. And I'm going to do it on black and I'll do it with metallic. And you can use, you know, any stamp that has some detail to it. You don't, I wouldn't try this with a, like this kind of stamp would probably, it might not come out so great because there's a lot of filler. But, you know, if it has fine details, like with sentiments and things like that, I think that works best. Although, you know, this could work, but. Um, I think it works best if you've got some detail, because when you do the imprint, it sh it's going to show up a little bit better. But, you know, if it's too, um, you don't want too fine of detail. If it was too delicate, like really lacy, they might not show up. So it's kind of a balance between having some detailed lines, but not having it be too um, fine a detail, like 
like this would be really difficult to pick up all that detail just because this is a pretty thick medium. But how you go about that is you just get this real wet again, and you can use, um, well, I'll use the dauber just because I can concentrate it a little bit more. And yeah, I'll use it like this. So you want to make sure that the, the pool of molten whatever is going to be big enough to cover what you're trying to do. So I'm just going to make sure it's real wet, real juicy. And I want it kind of an organic shape. I don't want to make it like square or anything specific. Sometimes I'll stamp the stamp down first just so I can see where, you know, where it's going to be so I know I can cover it. And then I'm going to use gold because we already have gold in here. And using my handy dandy safety pick. Now this is a this is a mat um, designed for stamping, and it I think it's like it, it's heat resistant. So just be aware. And I have silicone underneath to protect my surface because this gets hot. So just make sure that you are protecting not only the top. Like this could probably handle the heat, but if you're on right on the table, there might be heat that's transferred. So just be careful that you're making sure that you protect your surface when you're using this. I'll, I sometimes use a little cookie sheet um, or a silicone um, baking mat that's a little thicker. Um, but since I have two heat resistant layers, it's okay, you know, for, for my setup. But I wanted you guys to know. Now, immediately um, before that cools, I'm going to try to get more powder on it. It may or may not work. It dries very quickly. And I find that that works with some powders better than others. Yeah, the metallics, I don't know that it works as well. Some of them just dry quicker. Um, yeah, I don't think I really picked up any of that. I either wasn't fast enough or this just cooled really quick. Could be the temperature. But I'm going to go ahead and heat set anything that's stuck to it. Make sure. Okay, now I'm going to do it the other way. So that's one way you can do it if you if it works for you. I haven't found as much luck with that method, just trying to re-soften it. I think it does depend on the powder and how quickly it dries. So another option is to let it cool a little so that it's, you want to make sure it's not soft for this method. And then you just keep layering on the embossing ink and then the powder. And I'm just doing the powder off camera just because I don't have room to have them both there at the same time and it's kind of a just to work quickly. All right so now you can see that more powder has stuck unlike the other time. Okay, then I'm gonna let that go. And the more layers you do, of course, the thicker the image, you can do, you know, four, um, five, just depends on what your, what thickness you want. But the, the, the more layers that you do, the thicker the image you're gonna get. And they do make thicker gels that would make a thicker image more quickly, like the one that I showed you before. Like this one, I don't know if you guys can see because it's white, but it's just, you can see the little powder granules are just thicker. And so they, they make a thicker layer. Okay, and while, that, while that's still hot, I'm just going to take the stamp and stamp right in the middle of it. Hopefully I didn't wait too long. See? Then you get a basically deboss in the embossing, pow in the embossing powder. 
So um, I did, I think, a couple more layers to get this one. You can see how much thicker that one is. And you just want to make sure that you, you move really quickly. And if you didn't get a for an image great the first time, you could try it stamping again. But of course, trying to get this same location is tricky. So, but you can just heat, heat it all up again, add another layer, you know, fill it in and then redo it if it doesn't work out. So, and you could add ink to it. I did add ink to this one before I stamped it in. That's why it's black because I added the ink and I used the archival ink for that. All right. Um, the last thing I'm going to show you, and then it's almost nine. <laughs> so, um, but I did want you guys to see this in action because it's kind of fascinating. Is this liquid applique? And I'm going to try it wet and I hope it works because I feel like in the past I've didn't know it was supposed to dry first, but typically you're supposed to let it dry. But I'm going to see if it'll work when it's wet. But it's just a little bit of a gel. Seems to work just as fine. So you get this little puffy. Looks like looks like a little thing of shaving cream. So a fun little 3D puff. And like I said, I've put little beads and things like that to make it look like frosting with um, sprinkles in it. And it can be a lot of fun. So I think I might try using that with the that uh, waffle cone that I made that I'm going to show next week when we do some more of the embossing with the dry embossing and we do the um, scoring so remember I made this little cone so I think I might use that to to make like an ice cream cone I don't have a lot of it but I might do some edging or something anyway we'll have fun with it thank you everyone for joining me for another episode of healing art after hours Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, interact with my channel to help me out. And as always, happy creating. Bye. Thank you.